Aviation and airline leaders are on the Hill this week for the U.S. Chamber's annual aviation summit. Let's get over to Phil LeBeau. He's live on the scene with a special guest. Phil. Thank you, David. Guillaume Fauré, hey, CEO of Airbus. We just had a chance here at the Chamber Aviation Summit to talk on stage. Well, I want to ask you, while you come to this event, uh, this is an interesting time for Airbus. You lowered your guidance earlier this year. Your stock really took a hit. And it has a lot of investors saying, where's the next catalyst? Where's the growth? Where's the excitement to make them say, i got to get back in on shares of Airbus? Uh, the growth is coming from the size of our backlog. Uh, we have uh, more than 8,000 planes in the backlog, so it's all about ramping up uh, the production and the deliveries. Uh, last year, we were targeting 720 planes. Uh, we did 735, so there's been an excitement. And um, as you said earlier this year, we had to lower a bit the guidance for this year. We're still working hard, uh, but it's not going to be a linear um, ramp up uh, because some suppliers have challenges. And that's what we're working hard on. So it's all about the speed of ramp up. And we're targeting rate 75 for the A320 family, which is an amazing uh, production rate by 2027. So it's still very exciting. What's the biggest challenge within the supply chain right now? Well, we have issues with uh, engines availability. And um, I mean, CFM, Pratt have had their, their issues, mainly on the single aisle. But we have also issues on uh, aerostructures, on landing gears, on seats, on interiors. So. These are a limited number of suppliers, but they are holding us back, and then we have to slow down everybody uh, when we are limited by some bottlenecks like this. With the interiors, one of the concerns I hear from airlines is we can't get these planes fast enough because the interior companies cannot adjust to all the different demands that are mm -hmm. out there. Fair, fair way of portraying it? Yeah, that's true. And there's a strong demand for upgrades of uh, cabins uh, for the airlines directly for their existing fleet plus the need to put interiors in new planes. And this is a very large demand uh, that went almost from zero during COVID to a very high level today. So the, um, the manufacturers of interiors are really working very hard to uh, deliver that uh, ramp up, which is actually much bigger than our own ramp up. How much will opening a second A320 line in Alabama, which you are close to doing, how much will that ease the backlog? allow you to really increase that production? Yeah, that's really important for the rate 75 uh, by 2026, 2027, uh, especially as we uh, ramp up faster on the A321. The proportion of A321 in the backlog is much higher than it was uh, earlier, and we will have by 27 a production system that will enable A321 manufacturing all around the world. So that will be very important for this. But on the short term, we are limited by supply chains. So that, that's not something that will de-bottleneck the engines or the interiors. As you look at the world, and we don't know what's going to happen with the U.S. election, but we may be entering a period here where there are more tariffs in the U.S., more tariffs with other countries around the world. How much does that potentially slow down growth, economic growth worldwide? Yeah. I think there is an impact on uh, economic growth. There is a sort of deglobalization that is at play. And obviously, that's not positive for GDP and for growth. Uh, but aviation is not too much suffering for it. Actually, I don't see it. We continue to have a demand that is much higher than the supply, including for the airlines. All planes keep flying, even if they are less competitive, because there is so much demand. So we are not at the point where aviation uh, is limited by this. Now, would we have tariffs here and there for aviation, which is not the case today? And I think that's not a good idea. Uh, we would have to pass uh, the, the taxis to the, um, uh, to the passengers. So at the end, someone has to pay for it. Guillaume Fauré, CEO of Airbus. Love always getting together, whether here or in Europe. And we're here at the U.S. Chamber Aviation Summit. Thank you, Pleasure Guillaume. You. Guys, I will send it back to you. We're going to be talking with a number of aviation industry CEOs throughout the day. Uh, Phil, it's David. We've got another minute or so. I'd love to get your take on Southwest, obviously, given how closely yep. you follow the company. I mean, it's a pretty remarkable thing to mm -hmm. see six directors say, we're out of here. Th that's true. And you also have the executive... Uh, executive chairman Gary Kelly saying that he will step down at the annual meeting in 2025. Here's the main question, David. Is that enough to satisfy Elliot? Because Elliot has been emphatic that Bob Jordan has to go. You saw the statement from Southwest today. They are committed to supporting Bob Jordan. They believe that he is the person to lead them through this transition. So does, does their commitment to have changes in the directors but not Bob Jordan, is that enough for Elliot to say, OK, we're good for now. We're not going to call a special shareholder meeting. We'll find out over the next several weeks. 
Yeah, uh, they're a very good point, Phil. We will. I mean, they've just beginning, really are just beginning that dialogue. Very hard to say where that will end up. But your point, of course, is the central one. They're still saying they fully support Bob Jordan, and Elliot clearly has indicated otherwise. Correct. Uh, Phil, thank you.